Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves, a YouTube series that's dedicated to taking books off my shelves and showing them to you at home. Mainly comic books and graphic novels and that type of thing because it's all I seem to buy. But it's here to hopefully inform a purchase or give you a look at something new, however you want to use it really. But either way, this week we're going to look at one of my absolute favourites and probably my favourite superhero book really. It's Daredevil by Mark Waid. Now, Daredevil by Mark Waid and a whole range of other artists. The series would later become quite closely associated with the artist Chris Samney, and quite rightly so. But this starts off with a whole roster of different artists, but Mark Waid being a consistent writer throughout. Now, this book took me by surprise. I originally had the smaller hardback graphic novel versions, which collected six issues. I read that and I was instantly just hooked because it's so well written, it's so enjoyable, it's so different and it, the pacing of it is wonderful. It's absolutely perfect read and it's a perfect superhero comic as well. It really is. It doesn't go like all brooding and deathly. It's breezy and light in places but it's serious in places as well. But it's really well balanced throughout. I got the oversized deluxe edition hardcovers in each of them. Now there is an omnibus version, a two omnibus versions of these in fact, but I really enjoyed the oversized hardcovers. They're a bit easier to hold and there's nice artwork. So we're going to be looking through all five volumes of the Daredevil series here in oversized hardcover format. Hopefully you'll enjoy having a closer look. Now, Mark Wade's Daredevil run is just spectacular, really. There isn't many other words you can use to describe it. It is definitely worthy of a lot of the hype that is gathered around it over the years. And as I said in the introduction, I've got the individual oversized hardback versions of the entire run. And I prefer these over the omnibuses just because they're a bit more easy to handle, really. And so, yeah, the dust jacket at the front. Side Day Volume 1 and the various artists to contribute to the first one and the back and then what's really nice about the oversized hardbacks is that they've all got individual artwork on the hardback itself as well which is great and so this is the artwork for Volume 1 You know, there isn't really many ways that I can tell you or, you know, go out and read this book because it's this, this and this you just have to read it because it was one of those things that I did as well. I started out reading the individual trade paperback version and I was instantly taken by the artwork that Paolo Rivera and the Macros Martin, I think, Macros Martin, all of those artists that contribute to this first kind of issues, the first issues really just drew me in but then the storyline was fantastic i was not a newcomer to daredevil i had read the frank miller run but then when i read this there was just something so amazing about the art about the way the story was paced about the bad guys and enemies they used about the confidence that daredevil had in it it, it was just it's just a really stunning beautiful read on every way shape and form it really does add something different to the daredevil mythos and it's totally different since reading this i've read a few other daredevil books and stuff like this and this is very much an individual take on daredevil i mean the radar sense that it depicts is just beautiful and stunning in every way everything about it is really individual to mark wade's run i don't think it's that similar to any of the other runs that I've seen at all really. On to volume two and this is where uh, another writer pops in, Greg Rucker, which who will be featured on the channel at some point definitely because he's a fantastic writer and where the artist Chris Samney also pops up. Now after this volume Chris Samney becomes pretty much the stable artist for this entire run, his artwork being on the cover here and this is the cover, dust jacket cover the side and the back and then the underneath artwork comes from the Punisher and Spider-Man crossover that appears in this work really and I'm not going to talk to you too much about the individual storylines I'm just going to show you the book because there is 
a hell of a lot of story going on. Now the first volume sets up a lot of the new kind of image of Daredevil really. It introduces a storyline that brings together a lot of the established enemies like the Hand and AIM and other things in the Marvel Universe, other evil organisations and volume two of the start continues that story really. It's all about them getting this, um, well let's just call it, you know, the, the MacGuffin really of the plot where they've got this piece of information that everybody needs and they don't want to give it back really and it's a fight for that information to get it out there and to keep it safe and to use it as a negotiating tool all that type of thing and then you get back into the more standalone issues with Daredevil and at some point Chris Samney's art pops in and you can tell Chris Samney's art almost instantly I, at least I can now anyway and this is an issue that Doctor Doom comes into it so again not your typical enemies that Daredevil would run into but this is another fa fantastic storyline where he gets captured essentially most of the issues as you go through seem kind of separate but then as you go through the series, mainly on to volume three, which we'll have a look at now. And this is volume three, the front day, side and the back. A bit of a chunkier volume, this one. I think it's the biggest volume out of the lot, really. And some wonderful Chris Samney artwork on the hardcover. Now in here is where a lot of these disparate storylines and separate storylines kind of culminate into one storyline really and the return of a villain that has been kind of known to the Daredevil fans far and wide for a long long time and volume three is really where this series kicks into a new gear not just in art but in writing and everything fantastic cover and yeah the covers are there full as you go through the book each book contains pretty much two trade paperbacks and so around about 12 issues, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but around about 12 issues per book. I love that cover with a Silver Surfer as well, it's fantastic. And the radar vision, when drawn by Chris Samley, is a thing of just beauty. The one thing I should say as well is there's not much in the way of extras at the end of these books. There's some variant covers on each of them and then some bare bones kind of extras really but not much and again you won't really be minding so much about the extras that, well I didn't anyway because the storyline is what you were here for more than anything volume four the front the side and the back volume three very much brings to a close the um the first main arc by the by the pair by wade and by samney and all that and volume four starts off a new kind of strand of daredevil's history and that is in san francisco where he goes back to san francisco and it's almost kind of like you'll see it says daredevil part one the daredevil issue one because they kind of restarted the series to a certain degree but it's really not as drastic a restart as you think it still feels very much like a continuation of the storyline they left over and to be honest if you if they said issue you know 37 or 38 it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. The fact that Marvel love restarting things because number one sell better than anything else. It's pretty much the only reason I think that number one appears. But it is very much again the same quality artwork and quality storytelling that each volume has kind of presented. And just because they've moved location to San Francisco does not in any way, shape or form make the story less impactful or less good really in any way, shape or form. And I love the cover of this one, it's just absolutely brilliant. I love that. And finally, the last in the hardback collection. And this is the cover of the dust jacket, and the side, and the back. And then underneath is this beautiful wrap around art. Stunning. And so this brings to a close the storylines that have been kick-started in Volume 4, but also brings to a close pretty much Mark Wade's Daredevil overall. And yeah, when you do when you do finish it all off, you are 
or at least I was totally satisfied. Well, if you've got to this point and you don't like the artwork and like the storyline, then there's something very much wrong, really. And I don't want to flick too much further through this because it does reveal the return of an even bigger bad guy into the Daredevil universe. But that is all of the volumes of Daredevil by Mark Waid. So I hope you enjoyed having a look through the Daredevil oversized hardbacks. If you haven't read this series already, do yourself a massive favour and pick it up and read it because it is spectacular in every way really and certainly up there with the best superhero books you're ever going to find.